There will be four free response questions on the AP Pre-Calculus exam. This video is modeled after FRQ1. It's about composition, zeros, limits, and how to know which model is most appropriate given a table of values. Let's pretend this is from the 2009 AP Pre-Calculus exam. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. This problem is calculator active. I recommend that you always reset your calculator at the beginning of a session. Let's reset by hitting second plus seven one two. That's second plus seven one two. Fresh calculator. Let f be a function defined for all real numbers. The table gives values of f of x at selected values of x. The function g is given by g of x equals this expression. A part 1. The function h is defined by h of x equals g of f of x. Both of these notations mean exactly the same thing. Find the value of h at 3 as a decimal approximation or indicate that it is not defined. Well, h at 3 means plugging 3 in for x. So h at 3 is going to equal uh, g at f at 3. Working from the inside out, let's see if we can determine f at 3. Well, according to the table, f at 3 is 7, so this becomes g at 7. We can use the graphing calculator to evaluate g at 7 easily if we enter g as y1. So go to your y equals and under y1, make a fraction by hitting alpha x. And uh, now we're just going to enter this expression. Here is g of x entered as y1. Quit your way to a blank screen. To evaluate g at 7, we need to evaluate y1 at 7. You can make y1 show up by hitting alpha trace enter and you can evaluate y1 at 7 by putting 7 in parentheses like this and hitting enter. We want a decimal approximation, not a fraction. So let's take the extra step of typing in 319 divided by 26. Kabam! Decimal approximation, 12.2692. The College Board will accept three decimal places. However, we have found that students will often make a mistake trying to round to three decimal places. So, we recommend always using four decimal places and never attempting to round. A Part 2. Find the value of F inverse at 5. To evaluate F inverse at 5, ask yourself F at what is equal to 5. Looking at the chart, we see that f at 6 is 5, so f inverse at 5 is equal to 6. B, part 1. Find all zeros of g of x as decimal approximations, or indicate that there are no real zeros. The zeros of g are where g of x is equal to 0. So, let's use the graphing calculator to find where g of x is equal to 0. Hit your y equals button. I find that the easiest way to find the zeros of a function is to graph the function and the x-axis and find the intersection point. So uh, let's put a zero on y2 so that the x-axis will show up on the graph. Hit graph and let's see what we've got to start with. There will be three zeros here, here, and here. Hit second trace and choose intersect. Move the pointer close to the first point of intersection and hit enter three times. Enter, enter, enter. So here's the first zero, negative 1.9385. Hit second trace five again. Move the pointer close to the second zero and hit enter three times. 
So there's the second one, 0 0.1437. And one more time, second trace five, move to the third intersection point and hit enter three times. 1.7948. That's it for B part one. B part two, determine the end behavior of G as X decreases without bound. Express your answer using the mathematical notation of a limit. The end behavior of G as X decreases without bound means the limit as X approaches negative infinity of G of X. In other words, what happens to the value of G of X as we slide to the left forever. Looking back at the graph of g of x, we see that as x approaches negative infinity, the value of g of x decreases without bound. It's falling, falling, falling. That's negative infinity. And that's it for b part two. Just for fun, let's see if we could come up with this answer just using the equation instead of the graph. As x approaches negative infinity, only the highest degree terms will affect this limit. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x will equal the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2x to the third power over x squared. This simplifies and is equivalent to the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2x. Think about what happens to the value of 2x as x approaches negative infinity. As x becomes negative 10, negative 100, negative 1000, negative a billion. Two times negative a billion is negative two billion. So we get a very, very negative number. Let's call it negative infinity. By the way, this is not valid mathematical notation, so do not put this anywhere on your AP exam. However, uh, you get the idea. Two times a very negative number is a very negative number. Two times negative infinity is negative infinity. C part one, use the table of values of f of x to determine if f is best modeled by a linear, quadratic, exponential, or logarithmic function. Let me take a minute to run through the notes that we need to determine which model is best given a set of data. A linear model will be best if the output values change additively over equal length input value intervals. In other words, if the first differences are equal. A quadratic model will be best if the second differences are equal over equal length input value intervals. An exponential model will be best if the output values change multiplicatively over equal length input value interval. Finally, a logarithmic model is best under the opposite set of circumstances. If the input values change multiplicatively over equal length output value intervals. Notice how the first three, linear, quadratic, and exponential, require equal length input value intervals. However, when we look back at the chart, we do not have equal length input value intervals. From 24 to 12, that's minus 12, but from 12 to 6, that's negative 6. So our only hope is logarithmic. Do we have input values changing multiplicatively over equal length output value intervals? So are these input values changing multiplicatively? Sure, uh, 24 times 1 half is 12. 12 times 1 half is 6. 6 times 1 half is 3. And 3 times 1 half is 3 halves. So the input values are changing multiplicatively. Do we have equally spaced output values? From 1 to 3, that's plus 2. 3 to 5, plus 2 again, 5 to 7, plus 2, and 7 to 9, plus 2. So, we indeed have input values that change multiplicatively over equal length output value intervals. 
a logarithmic model is best. C part two just says give a reason for your answer. So I'm going to answer C part one and part two all at once. A logarithmic model is best because input values of F change multiplicatively times one half over equal length output value intervals of two. Or if you don't like the phrase change multiplicatively, you could say because input values of F are proportional times one half over equal length output value intervals of two. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.